Thank you for watching videos by Jeff Sebelius. In this episode, I'll continue a series of videos that prepares you to fly the unique Typhoon H by taking you on a step-by-step -step walkthrough of your first flight. This episode is part of a series of videos designed to help you complete a safe and successful first flight with the unique Typhoon H. Let's get started with Typhoon H, your first flight. Be sure to complete the tasks shown in Episode 1, Initial Steps, and Episode 2, Pre-Flight, before you fly your first flight. Now, if you haven't removed the gimbal guard from your camera, your first step is to remove this piece. Then place the aircraft on a level spot on the ground. Notice how far away I put the aircraft from where I'm standing. We'll be starting in Smart Mode. Smart Mode establishes a safety boundary of 26 feet from the transmitter, called the Smart Circle. The aircraft in Smart Mode is designed not to fly inside that Smart Circle, to protect you from being struck by the aircraft. However, this means you must make sure you're further than 26 feet away when you take off in Smart Mode. Otherwise, the aircraft will detect that it's within the Smart Circle and try to escape, which means it will behave unpredictably. If you take off in Angle Mode, you don't have the Smart Circle, so you don't have to stand 26 feet away. Still, use common sense. Don't stand too close to the aircraft as it takes off. Now it's time to set the transmitter. Let's look at the switches across the top of the transmitter and choose settings for this first flight. From the left, your first switch is the gimbal pan mode. Push this switch all the way up. The second switch is for gimbal tilt mode. Push this all the way up. Now you find the gimbal control knob for rotating the gimbal. Make sure this knob is centered rather than turned to the left or right. Continuing on, this switch is reserved for future functions, so it doesn't matter where it's set. Next is the obstacle avoidance switch. Push it up to shut off obstacle avoidance for this first flight. Finally, to the right side is the flight mode switch. For today's flight, we'll begin in smart mode, so push it all the way up or forward. Now, along the top is another toggle switch by the antennas. This is for raising your landing gear. Obviously, we want the gear to be lowered for takeoff, so pull this switch down. We've got two more knobs to set. On the left side is the gimbal tilt knob. Push it all the way up or forward. On the right side is the speed knob. You can set this however you'd like. I prefer to push mine forward, rabbit mode, so the aircraft will pop up off the ground faster. Our transmitter is ready to go, so now we can turn it on. When you see the unique logo on the screen, turn on power to the aircraft. Once the aircraft and transmitter are booted up, the two devices go through their startup procedures of searching out connections to each other and to the satellites. You are waiting for GPS lock. When you achieve GPS lock, the main indicator light on the back of the aircraft will be green with blinking purple, because we're in smart mode. If we were in angle mode, we'd watch for the indicator light to blink purple and white. I usually take a last look to make sure all my transmitter settings are good and do a last visual check to make sure no one is walking up to me from behind. By the way, I'm leaving obstacle avoidance off for this first flight. You can use it if you want, just make sure to leave it off for takeoff. Turn it on when you're above 10 feet or so. Then turn it off before landing. I'll cover obstacle avoidance in real sense in another video. Alright, here we go. Press the red button to start your motors. Push the left stick all the way forward. Your Typhoon H should pop up off the ground. Take it up to 10 or 15 feet and let go of the left stick. I like to let the aircraft hover for a moment to make sure it's working properly. 
Is it wobbling around or hovering in place? Are the indicator lights all good? Does your transmitter give you a clear view of what the aircraft's camera is seeing? We're ready to fly. First, as a new flyer, you should keep things moving slowly. On your right slider, pull it all the way back from rabbit to turtle mode. Now the aircraft will move slowly so you have time to react and learn. Let's start with the left stick. Push it forward and you see the aircraft goes up. Pull it down and the aircraft comes down. Let go and it hovers. If you push the left stick to the right, the aircraft will spin in that direction. This is called yaw. Push it to the left and the aircraft yaws in the opposite direction. Now the right stick. Push it to the left and the aircraft will slide to the left. Push it to the right and it slides to the right. If you push the right stick forward, the aircraft moves away from you. Pull the right stick back and the aircraft flies back in your direction. Remember, we're in smart mode, so the aircraft will move forward and back without regard to what way it is pointing. Watch, I rotate the aircraft so it's pointing to the side. I push the right stick forward and the aircraft still flies forward away from me. Here you can see that I'm literally yawing the aircraft in a pirouette as it flies forward and then back. In smart mode, forward is always forward no matter which way the drone is pointing. Now I'm going to switch to angle mode. You can see the indicator light on the back has changed from green to purple. Now let's spin the aircraft 90 degrees to the left. Let's push the right stick forward. In angle mode, you see that pushing the right stick forward sends the aircraft to the left or it sends the aircraft to the aircraft's forward direction. If I pull the right stick back, the aircraft goes in its backward direction, or in this case, to my right. If I want it to go away from me, I'll have to push the stick to the right so the aircraft flies to its right. Push the right stick to the left and the aircraft comes back to me. This is angle mode. Forward is always the direction the nose of the drone is pointed. I haven't talked yet about taking pictures. First, let's get the landing gear out of the way. Hit the landing gear button on the antenna face of the transmitter and the landing gear raises up so it won't be in your photos. Now we can shoot images. If I wanted to shoot a still photo, I'd hit the button on the left side of the transmitter. To shoot video, hit the button on the right side. The screen shows a red dot and a counter to display how long you've been recording. To stop recording video, just hit the button on the right side again. For now, I'm going to let the video continue to record. This is also a good opportunity to set your gimbal angle by moving the left slider. Pulling the slider back down points the camera downwards. All the way and the camera is pointing straight down. If we then fly straight up, you get a better sense of how this view works. This is a very common shot for aerial videographers. If you push the gimbal slider forward, the camera pans up until it's pointing straight forward. A perfect angle for a 360 degree panorama. Let's switch back to smart mode and fly around for fun. 
Practice using the left stick, then the right stick, so you become comfortable with what each one does. Now let's spend a little time flying with both sticks together. You can fly diagonally up and down, go right and left, or spin as you descend. One motion to avoid if you're at a significant height is to fly straight down, especially if you're in rabbit mode. The propellers cause turbulence in the air beneath them. If you descend into that turbulence, your props can literally lose the grip on the air and you can crash. This is called vortex ring state. When you want to descend, you can come straight down as long as you do it slowly. Or you can use a zigzag pattern. Pull both sticks back so you fly on a backward slant down. Then push the right stick forward, but keep the left stick back so you're flying in a forward slant down. Use this zigzag pattern to avoid vortex ring state. Time to demonstrate a manual landing. The first step is to lower the landing gear. You don't want to land without doing that. Check to verify you're in turtle mode. I encourage you to do this every time you land. Turtle mode makes it easier to land slowly and gently. Now, position the aircraft where you want to land and pull the left stick back halfway so the aircraft descends slowly. As you approach the ground, ease up on the left stick so you land gently. Once the aircraft is on the ground, hold the red button down. I prefer to push the red button and kill the motors before releasing the left stick. You should be able to let go of the left stick before you stop the motors, but on one of my previous flights, my Typhoon H tried to take off again when I let the stick go. Now I kill the motors before releasing the left stick. Let's take off again. Move the indicator switch to smart mode, change to rabbit setting, and hold the red button to start the motors. Take off again. Reduce your speed to turtle mode and raise your landing gear, then fly forward. Let's demonstrate one more thing. Remember when I said you're protected with a 26 foot circle while you're in smart mode? Let's see that in action. I'm bringing the aircraft back towards me. Once it reaches the smart circle, it stops. You can see I'm pulling the right stick back, but it won't fly closer to me. The smart circle is protecting me from being struck by the aircraft. Time to practice bringing the Typhoon H in for another manual landing. The aircraft is on the ground. Hit the red button to stop the motors. Have you been recording video? Be sure to hit the video button on the right side to stop the recording, otherwise your video won't be saved. As a safety precaution, Unique recommends that you turn off power to the aircraft first, then turn off the transmitter. This concludes your first flight with the Typhoon H. Typhoon H has many other features for you to learn. However, for your first few flights, focus on what I've demonstrated here. Get these basics down so you're comfortable with them before expanding into other features. I encourage you to practice each of these functions in an open field until you're comfortable with them before taking on more adventurous flight situations. 
I hope you found this to be helpful. I've got many other videos that train you on the unique Typhoon H. A link to the complete playlist is on screen. Please help me in return by hitting the like button below and subscribing. Got any questions or opinions? Your feedback in the comments section below is greatly appreciated. Thanks for watching.